brought to you by Rich TV Live. Welcome back, everybody, to Whiteboard Finance. I brought along three excellent guests today because we're talking about the top three marijuana stocks for 2019. I have Aaron of Departures Capital. I have Rich TV Live, and I also have Investing Hustler. If you guys have been around the YouTube in, uh, investing or cannabis stock scene, you guys definitely know of these three names. If not, uh, I'll leave a link in the description to their channels below. So as I mentioned just now, we're talking about the top three marijuana stocks for 2019 and beyond. Uh, we're going to do kind of like a roundtable discussion. These guys have their finger on the pulse of the industry. So I figured instead of me, you know, just talking in front of the camera like I know it all, I'd bring on three experts. So everybody just want to uh, introduce yourselves very quickly. Let's start with uh, Departures Capital. For sure. I'm Aaron from Departures Capital. Departures Capital is basically, basically like a news channel. So we do a morning show a market minute after the market show. We've got our finger on the pulse of the market every day. So we report news and we do talk stock analysis, but we're mainly news just keeping you up to date on the market. So that's what we're all about. Daily videos, at least two videos a day. Cool, Rich. Hey guys, how you doing? This is Rich from Rich TV Live. I've uh, been doing this on YouTube for almost two years. We talk stocks, we talk trending topics. We're in the CBD space. We're in the data business for cannabis stocks. So we're in the game. And we're proud of it. And uh, thank you guys for having us here today. And we're excited about the collaboration. Great. Investing Hustler. What's up, buddy? What's going on, guys? Obviously, my name is Investing Hustler. I talk about a lot of investing, about hustling. And first of all, I just want to say thank you guys for having me here. I'm like the smallest channel here. I have like 6,000 subscribers. You guys have like 12, 18. I think how much you have too, Michael? 12? <laughs> So yeah. I'm, just, I'm just honored to be here with you, with the big dogs. So thank you guys for having me. <laughs> My pleasure, man. So let's get it started, man. Let's get into the top three picks. What's everyone's top three picks, starting with uh, Aaron with Departures Capital? All right. So, I mean, it is our biggest holding still, Aurora Cannabis. So it's got to be our number one pick just because, I mean, I hope they do get a deal sometime. Either way, though, we definitely like the company. We've been with the company for a few years now. So Aurora is our number one. Number two. I'm going to have to say Afria because I think either Aurora or Afria is going to get a deal, I hope. And I do like that they're Leamington-based and they're a low-cost producer. So I'm going to pick two producers, and I'm also picking number three, Oxley Cannabis, because I love the streaming model of Oxley. I mean, I've followed Precious Metal Mining Stocks for a while. If you're aware of Wheaton Precious Metals, they're a Precious Metal Mining streamer, and Oxley basically has the same business model they stream, they do have their production facilities, but at the same time, they make a partnership with growers. Therefore, they can, buy this, they can buy the cannabis and not have to worry about all the overhead of all those facilities. So I like the different business models. So those are my three top picks. Great. Rich, what do you think, buddy? Wow, there's so many picks. It's so I know. But I'm going to have to say my number one right now is Tea God, the Green Organic Dutchman. I believe it's extremely undervalued. They are growing globally. They are multiple continents, multiple countries, and trading at you know under four dollars. So it's a no-brainer <clears throat> for me there. Um, I believe Alethea Health is going to shock the world like they have already, and they've got the uh, chief of police on their board and uh, in Toronto, which. Uh, <laughs> That's a lot of pull there. And I believe they are going to go onto the NASDAQ and they're going to be a huge success. I think that company is poised to explode. And I also believe Ceneva. Ceneva. I think Ceneva is going to be the canopy of California. I think that that is a good position to be in. California has got the same population as Canada. So I think that they're well positioned, especially at the price point that they're at. I believe they're grossly undervalued. And I think those are three companies that have very, very uh, great futures. And I believe in 2019, they'll be very successful. Very good. Rich, what do you think, my friend? Jose. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say investing? I'm sorry. I meant to say uh, investing. My bad. Edit that out. Um, <laughs> this was actually very hard to make a top three because like the three obvious picks that I would have picked would have been Aurora, Canopy, and Apria. Since they're the three biggest companies in Canada. But I wanted to pick something that mo maybe most people wouldn't have heard of. So one of my picks was Planet 13. 
which just opened a, the world's largest dispensary in Vegas on November 1st. And on Friday, they went up 17%. And I've actually made a lot of video. I mean, I made one video on Planet 13, but I've talked about Planet 13 a lot. And pretty much they've opened a 40,000 square foot uh, facility in Vegas. And that's only their first phase. They, and Vegas attracts 55 million tourists each year. Uh, I could go on about this company forever, but that was one of my picks. My second pick is, I agree with Rich, with T-God, which is um, an organic company. And I, I feel like the name T-God alone, the, the organic thing alone, is really good for T-God. And at the price they're at right now, which is below their IPO, I think it's a very good grab, especially uh, two, I think Thursday or Friday, they were at below $2. I think they were around $2.50. So that was a really good grab for T-God. And they have like global... They have a global mindset. They have a facility. They're, they're planning to open in Europe. They have a partnership in Jamaica where they're producing um, wheat at 20 cents per gram, which is really amazing. And then my, my number one company, which is the most obvious one, because I pretty much post like 20 videos of it every week, is Aurora Cannabis. And everyone knows about Aurora Cannabis. It's, it's almost everyone's favorite company. I'm pretty sure we could all agree with Aurora Cannabis. So those are my three, three companies. Great. Okay. So just to give a quick list of my three going into this video, I'm not going to go into depth because you guys already touched on them. So I was going to do Canopy Growth just because it's the big dog. Uh, they just closed the $4 billion deal with Constellation Brands. That's an old deal in the making, but the deal is actually done, which is always good. Um, they're acquiring everybody left and right. I think they're trying to dominate the hemp market. Uh, my second pick was Aurora for obvious reasons. They're one of the bigger dogs as well. I'm not going to go into detail on that one. Uh, and also my sleeper pick was uh, Planet 13. So I agree with you, Investing Hustler. They're, they're definitely in a good tourist market. I just got back from Vegas about a month ago with my wife, and you can definitely smell different smells on the strip than you use <laughs> to just the open containers. Now it's you know, a little bit more aromatic. Um, so starting with Departures Capital, a lot of my viewers, they asked me about the long-term viability of the hemp industry. So just going into 2019, you know, and I'm, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, what is your outlook for 2019 in general? Well, I think it's really going to be dependent on uh, s supply and demand, right? So if supply, well, <laughs> I, I mean, what we've been seeing is supply hasn't even been meeting demand. So that's a, kind of the opposite of what we've expected. We expected demand to way over exceed supply, right? So if we keep seeing those positives and, you know, the Ontario cannabis store can get their stuff together and the, you know, like we've had some issues with that. I feel like it could be very positive. I mean, um, and then of course, like if supply was to ever exceed demand, then of course we'd have to look internationally, but there's so many opportunities internationally, not to mention, you know, the U S seems to be moving, towards legalization, like complete legalization pretty well. So that's going to be the next market that explodes. And that market's so much bigger than Canada. There's so many opportunities in the U.S. market. So that's going to be the next boom for sure. And as we make, as we progress, I think like that's a sector to look at. But overall, I think 20, 2019 looks pretty bright. Great. Uh, Rich, what's your outlook for 2019 in general? Oh, I think it's going to be huge. <laughs> Yeah, like I, I work with these companies. You guys are going to see I talk to these companies. Um, yeah, I'm on the inside of a lot of companies. And they're just going to get huge. Mm -hmm. Like Namaste is going to explode. Oxley is going to explode. Vivo is going to explode. Hip is going to explode. Canopy is going to continue to explode. Tilray will continue to explode. Aurora will continue to explode. I'm not just talking about their price. I'm talking about as a business, these companies are going to just keep accumulating their growth. They're not going to stop and they're going to become global powerhouses. And these are the companies that are going to be the next Amazons and Googles of the next 10, 20 years, in my opinion. Okay, great. Uh, you sound a little bit like Trump. <laughs> it's going to be huge. <laughs> That's a compliment though, uh, uh, for a lot of viewers on my channel. Uh, Investing Hustler, what do you think, buddy? Well, I think the most important thing will be the first quarter after legalization. So the first quarter earnings after legalization, that's where we're gonna see, I, I'm hoping a huge growth in numbers because Canopy is gonna be legal in Canada. I mean, marijuana is gonna be legal in Canada. So we're gonna see their first quarter results, like the sale results, the recreational market, how it's really gonna do. On top of that, I do feel like a lot of these companies have to go global because Canada only has, I think a population of 28 million. 
And then you look into Europe where they have like 700 million. You look into the U.S. where they have hundreds of millions of people. So the companies that are look, looking to expand globally, those are the companies that are really going to blow up. And the companies that are just focusing inside Canada, um, they might die down a little because uh, Canada's population is not that big compared to the rest of the world. So those are my thoughts. Okay, very good. All right, guys, thank you so much for your input. Uh, any other questions or any other hot buttons that people may want to know about the top three marijuana stocks for 2019? Any quick blurbs at the end? I just think all your guys' picks are really good. I think everybody's <laughs> picks you. that I thought were bad. So from that perspective, I was quite pleased. Okay, if, yeah. we, had to, if we had to agree on a number one, uh, is there a consensus here? Or are we all going to stick with our own number ones? I don't know. What's your guys' number one? I, like, I feel like the obvious one is Aurora. I could definitely agree with Aurora. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it, Aurora is going to see the most growth because exactly. the smaller companies might see the most growth because – it hasn't been tapped into yet. Yeah. Like, like that was my dog. I don't know if you guys heard that. <laughs> yeah, like, um, I, Planet 13 is only selling at around $2. If that grows all the way to $10 to $8, that's almost five times growth. Aurora, I could see it growing maybe to $15 max, which is less than double. So, But Aurora is the safest bet. I don't know. What do you guys think? It's a good point. Agree. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if Aurora is a safe bet. I think, I mean, it is a safe haven for me. I just bought some because I saw it at 15 and then it went down to eight. So I was like, okay, let me buy some at eight. But I still think that the highest it's been is 15 and the lowest has been recently is five. So we could see it go down a little bit lower. Do I think it's going to be the number one pick of 2019? Probably not. Um, It definitely wasn't the number one pick of 2018. I think the number one pick of 2018 was probably like probably Tilray. Tilray, yeah. I mean, Tilray went to three hundred dollars, right? From twenty bucks. I mean, in a short period of time, Tilray went up ten x in literally two months. And what about about IGC? What about IGC? IGC, But another one I was going to say was CVSI. CVSI was up like four thousand percent this year. Oh wow. Right until Andrew left, got his hands on it. Right, so there, there's a lot of companies that have done really well. Aurora has been a safe haven for me; it's always been my number one. But it's hard to predict what's going to be the number one for 2019. It'll most likely be something we didn't talk about. Yeah, very true. That's a possibility. Could be like a penny stock. Like Andrew Cali. left, couldn't make it. He have you guys seen that penny stock, Cali? K A L Y in America. It's up over two thousand percent in the last two weeks. Yeah, I, well, you've told me about it. I've actually put it on my watch list. That's a penny stock, right? So sometimes you can't compare an Aurora to a penny stock that has a chance to go up thousands of percent from the bottom, right? So most likely none of these picks will be the number one pick, but it would be nice if Aurora went up like 10x. 